Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to Tuesday Talk. It is a delight to have you with me tonight. What a great day. This is the day, right? This is the day that Adonai has made, and this is the day that we get to rejoice in it, and we get to be glad in it, and we get to gather together because it's beautiful. It's so beautiful when his people gather together, and that's what we get to do tonight. So I'm just really delighted, and I'm also delighted that we have uh, Cindy Guilfoyle with us tonight. She's going to be sitting and chatting with me, and she's got a couple uh, testimonies to share. I um, am encouraging ladies, if you have a testimony that you want to share, please put it in the ch put in the chat box that you have a testimony you want to share and raise your hand so I'll know to be able to call on you. I, I would really like to have some interaction this evening and have this be um, in this Tuesday talk. I'd love to have some uh, testimonies. Uh, I want them recorded because I think it's so important that we record our gratitude. And that's something else that Cindy um, remind me, if I don't remember, will you please just jump in on that? Because I know that that's something that you really, um, you have a gift, a genius about recording your gratitude. And so anyway, ladies, I just wanted to say hello. Welcome to Tuesday Talk. What a blessing it is to be able, be able to gather together. And we have, um, we have some amazing seasons and times that are coming up upon us and we have gotten through some really really difficult times and right now we're kind of right in in between the two in between the difficult and in between the joyous and we are um, in a place um, that the holy one is bringing comfort to his people this is this time period of comfort and i really want us to be able to kind of tonight, just kind of invite that, sit in it a little bit, sit in the comfort. Um, uh, some of us have, are going through, a, you know, a time period of grief. And I know that the Holy One is really bringing the whole idea of comfort to me in a fresh and new way that I've never experienced before. And so this is uh, really beautiful. And also, um, we are looking forward, we are anticipating that the king is coming to the field. He's going to be in the field meeting us. In just a few days is the beginning of the month of Elul when the Holy One comes and he's in the field and he's there walking among us, not mm -hmm. far away, but right in the midst. And that is a time that we can be with our, our beloved, you know, a time when we can really know that he has drawn close to us. Mm -hmm. um, and he's not, he's not insisting that we come up to the hill. He is saying, I'm in the field. You don't even have to go up the hill. I'm right here in the field. And that's beautiful. And that is leading us into um, the fall feasts. And so what a, I'm going to let some people in what a what a beautiful time that we are being allowed to be in. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to encourage each and every one of you, ladies, that, that you were created for this time right now. You were made for this time right here and right now. And it's not a coincidence that these were the years that you were born and that these are the years that you are walking on this earth and that these are the years that you're with the rest of us because this is an appointed time for us all. And we've been chosen to be in this time frame. Sometimes when I have uh, difficulties um, in, in, you know, in the everyday management of things that are occurring in my life, and I run into situations that make it um, a little bit more complicated or, or difficult. I am constantly being reminded that he created me for this time, and that mm -hmm. I am the woman for this job. And, mm -hmm. and what it does is it doesn't make me feel burdened, and it doesn't make me feel heavy, it makes me feel delighted. It makes me feel like, Father, you chose me, this is a hard job you chose me for this job. That's pretty awesome that you, that, you know, you want to partner with me. I can't do this without him. Mm -hmm. And and it's, and it, it encourages me. So um, I just, I hope that somebody needed to hear that tonight because boy, I sure needed to hear it today. 
Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ina Gould, so much for coming on and for co-hosting with me tonight and um, um, letting all the ladies in. Thank you, sis. I appreciate you. Cindy, how are you today? Doing good. Doing good. Yeah. Taking Great. some time out to be with everyone in the middle of all my moving stuff and everything. And, and we appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. really great. It's really great this to have you here. Amazing, yeah. Love this group. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I love this group. I love all of you. So um, let me just take care of some business real quick. I just wanted to say that, that those of you that are listening on podcast after, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us by podcast. And for those of you that are watching the replay, thank you so much. You know, it's a blessing for us. We know that we cannot always have the perfect time that everybody will be able to jump on. We would love it if we could actually do that, but not possible. But we're trying our very best to be able to do evenings and mornings so that we can kind of get a little bit of everybody in. And at least once a month, you'll be able to join with everybody, I'm hoping. So I um, just wanted to say thank you for all of you being patient with having, having to deal with some time changes because now Tuesday Talks are going to be uh, one in the morning and one in the evening. So we're going to just do it twice a month instead of every week. And the first Tuesday of every month will be our evening and like tonight. And I'll be delighted to have an evening um, broadcast with all of you live. And then the third Tuesday of the month will be, <clears throat> pardon me, the third Tuesday of the month will be in the mornings at 11 Eastern. So we'll still be doing that. And then that'll also give me a chance to pop in and do some other things and have some other things going on. And um, I'll still be with everybody. But uh, I, I'm, I'm blessed that we're going to be able to catch the morning people and the evening people. So I hope that that's a blessing to all of you ladies, too. I want to say hello to everyone who's joining us live. Good to see you all. Appreciate you. So, um, Cindy, let's get started. Tonight, we're going to be talking about gratitude, and we are going to have some testimonies. Um, I am looking, I, I invited a couple people to come on. I don't see them yet, but that's okay, because I know that the Holy One's already arranged all of these things. So, ladies, if you have a testimony that you would like to share, please raise your hand or um, put it in the chat and just say, I've got a testimony, okay? And then that way I'll be able to um, call on you. But to begin with, we're gonna just talk, Cindy and I are gonna just kind of talk to you a little bit about gratitude and this journey of gratitude. Cindy, I know that um, when you came to know, um, when you came to know the Holy One, you, you had some pretty exciting um, experiences. Uh, with gratitude. I even took notes. <laughs> but um, yeah, I did. I took some notes. I thought, right. I thought, oh my goodness, this is so great. One of the things, and I did remember this, uh, yeah. one of the things that you and I had talked about was that you, uh, in the process of your adopting your children, mm -hmm. that you decided that one of the best ways that you could honor their history and mm -hmm. secure their their history for them was mm -hmm. to do what you called faith booking yes. um and do you want to just tell us a little bit about that i just love this idea and maybe some of the other ladies are already doing it or maybe they've heard about it but you wanted to share with us a little bit about how you did that and what that meant to your children and right. then we could go from there well and to me too and yeah mm -hmm. my whole family um, mm -hmm. because we just love the stories and going over them. And this way we don't forget them as we're right. so prone to do. We just always forget all the awesome stories, even though we think we won't. Um, but about Isn't that the like truth? 20, <laughs> yeah, I know. Totally. About 20 years ago, uh, 21 years ago, when I got my daughter, um, I started getting invited to, uh, creative memory scrap, scrapbooking parties mm -hmm. and everything. And so mm -hmm. I, you know, got into that and then I became a consultant and, um, uh, some of the ladies uh, were doing something called faith booking and that's the scrapbooking but with the faith element in mind so you're um you're jotting down those god moments Ooh, you know love that um, the things that happen and and it's like the more you record those events the more you see those events so that plays into right. the gratitude too you're not taking it for granted 
you're you're recognizing every single one of those memories and moments and the little things and the big things. Um, so I would just do it quick, you know, like a, a page in a, and document the event with a mm -hmm. picture or something or memorabilia and then journal the story, what happened. And so I have, you know, like quite a big collection and we can look back on it and just like remember all the wows, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is so beautiful. Yeah. I, um, you know, I think, oh, I'll remember. Oh, I'll remember. No, 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 I don't. <laughs> no. no, I don't yeah. remember. <laughs> and every time I do that, I'm like, oh, come on. You knew better than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember. You don't no remember. matter how clear it seems to be. Yes, yes. Yeah, I was telling you uh, yesterday, I think it was when we were chatting that I had had a dream that morning. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, Oh, I'll remember I'll remember. And then I thought, well, I better, I better record it just in case. So I grabbed my I keep my phone by my bed and I hit my little memo, uh, mm -hmm. my memo app, and I recorded it verbally, because my eyes were unfocused. It was three in the morning and my eyes were unfocused. I couldn't I wouldn't have been able to type anything up anyway. And, but I thought, oh, but I'll remember it. And, and then I went back to sleep. And do you know that I still don't remember that dream? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I I'm, glad I yeah. I'm glad I recorded it, but I, I yeah. don't remember. I don't remember it. So yeah. um, that's really I've done wonderful. That before too. Yeah. 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 But I texted myself. That's all. Okay. Um, well, go ahead. Share another story. I've got to take care of some business here with sure. the, with sure. this. So let's. Well, my, one of the main stories of gratitude I was thinking about kind of like is um, a life's work that the Holy One's been doing with me. And like when I was born, I was extremely shy. Ex I mean, I would just hide behind my mother, hide at home, you know, did not like being out. And so like my life's journey with him has been um, bringing me out of that. So mm -hmm. like, you know, years ago, I would never have done anything like this, you know, anything like this. Really? Um, so, yeah. So, um, and, and, and a part of coming to that point too, is making yourself pliable in his hands, being willing to do those hard things to, mm -hmm. you know, to do the uncomfortable. And, and he's there when you do it. And, you know, he never fails. And, and it's so grateful. Yeah. He's so faithful. Yeah. 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 And so you, so you have more of a tendency to be a little bit more on the shy side. Is that? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> and yes. here I'm just like bulldozing in like, Hey, come on in and join me. And we're going to just do this. <laughs> and we're going to be talking and don't worry about it. It's all good. We're just having coffee together. There's no biggie. <laughs> but I took that as his leading. You know, yeah. he wants me to do this, you know, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, okay. You know, um, <clears throat> I, I tutored a homeschool group of, of eight kids, eight, you know, like there's 10, six to 10, depending on the year, like four mm -hmm. or five years, it was mm -hmm. a high school group with classical conversations. And so I had to like teach these kids and their parents were in the room and communicate and, you know, learn all the subjects. Cause I had to teach everything from Latin to math to, you know, debate and everything, you know? So, wow. Like, I mean, I, he's really had me step out of my comfort zone, you know, repeatedly for years, just yeah. working on that, you know, mm -hmm. that's beautiful. Yeah. Well, Cindy, you have a really great testimony. We were, we were talking a little bit about, um, about your testimony and one of the things that, and for those of you, I apologize, C Cindy, is one of our uh, Rooted Cafe members. She is also one of our guides. And so you, most of you are familiar with her because she probably helped you get started <laughs> and helped you navigate through when you first started um, on the Rooted Cafe. And um, and Cindy, thank you so much for being with me tonight. I I, I didn't mean to not uh, give you the honor due to oh. you. <laughs> no. So we, you and I were talking and I, um, I wrote a couple notes down because there were a couple things, a couple gratitude stories that you and I talked about that really grabbed me. And one of them, I, uh, oh, it's going to make me start crying. Oh, here it comes. Okay. So one of them was the fact that, and I was joking with you, but it's, it's really true that you were basically, you were in labor for two and a half years. Yes. 
Yes. Because yes. you have this incredible, amazing story of how the Holy One brought your children to you. Yes. And um, do you, would you, would you be comfortable sharing that with us? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's such a beautiful, it's such a beautiful story. I would love for everyone to hear it. So well, it's please. even longer than two years because yeah. um, we, we, we went through infertility for 10 years mm -hmm. and then, you know, just starts and stops with various things, checking out um, medical things and checking out, um, you know, adoption and, and just having us turned off of it when we first looked because of, you know, different rules and things. And then mm -hmm. we finally did a private adoption. And even once we started, it took like two, two and a half years to get my daughter. Um, we were living in uh, Antelope Valley of Palmdale and we had to go all the way to Chicago to get her, um, stay there 10 days and um, then brought her home. And then a little while later, we decided to do it again. And we again had to wait like two, two and a half years for my son. And, and he was closer to us. So all, um, lots of family members got to be at the hospital and um, meet him the first time. And um, I was able to spend the night with him in the hospital, like I had given birth to him. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, both of our kids are adopted from the hospital. Um, yeah, and it, it's just, um, yeah, it was a really, really, and it was an experience of patience mm -hmm. and trust. And, you know, um, through the 10 years of infertility, even before we were like anywhere near getting my daughter, um, I can just remember just being in the, the low and just thinking it's never going to happen. Even though it was like my deepest heart desire was to be a mother, mm -hmm. um, it just wasn't going to happen, you know, and I was struggling with that. And there were just a few little things that, that he did that were just like little gifts along the way that just let me see, you know, I'm, I'm still there, I'm waiting and I can see it now. If, if it had been any sooner, I wouldn't have had my kids my kids are my kids. Right. And it, they wouldn't have been if it had been any sooner. You know, and I see that. So I can use that in everything else that happens oh. in life. Wow. You know? Yeah. Such an incredible life lesson in the midst of all of that. And that's like the, the perfect, the, the time of waiting. You were telling me that, that um, during this two and a half year period of waiting, it wasn't just you know, waiting, oh, I'm going to wait two and a half years. It was, it was as if you were pregnant waiting two and a half years because you were waiting for the phone to ring every single day for two and a half years. You had your bag packed as if you were going to be going yep. to the hospital because you had to go to the yep. hospital. Make the room husband, up. You had to make the room up. Your, your yeah. husband had to notify his, his company. He was always letting his bosses know it could happen yep. at any time. Yep. And so for and two and a half years, years like, yeah. yeah, they're um, like, yeah, what? right. It's going to, yeah, right. <laughs> and then so it did. That was, a, that was a long, right. that was a long labor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Twice. Yeah. A very torturous, yeah, labor, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you were saying that, like, for example, when you're when you got the call, when you when mm -hmm. you finally got that, hey, we've got the baby, mm -hmm. your baby's being born right now, or your baby was born last night, I think is what that they was told my you. son. Yeah, your son, yeah, your son was right. born last night. Come and get him. Right. It was like like the fire alarm went off, and your mother in law just happened to be coming right then right there yeah and yep. so everyone to was able my to my daughter so I could have a break yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And you yeah, were all able to be at the hospital together you were able to welcome your son the yep. family was able to gather at the hospital yeah yeah my mother was there um with my uh sister's little girl and um my husband was brought from work uh with from his brother so, I mean, yeah, there was a, a bunch of us from the family just there at the hospital and I have pictures of it and everything and scrapbook. Uh, yeah. That's part was, of your, your faith booking, huh? Yes. Wasn't yes. it? Yeah. Oh, yes, that's definitely. That's really wonderful. So Cindy, right now you are um, in a, in all of these labor, all of these baby metaphors, right? Yes. <laughs> You're kind of in a transition phase that's going yes. on right now in your life. Yes. And um, the reason that I wanted to have you on, um, the reason that I wanted you to come and just sit and chat with me for, for a few minutes tonight is because 
you're, you are in the midst of um, a very difficult time period in your life. And yet at the same time, it's like, your hopefulness is through the roof. Your, yes. You and your children are all excited. You are looking forward to what the Holy One has for you. Um, mm -hmm. It's just really a great, I don't even know how to explain it, but like a great example of what, of what a heart of gratitude, how a heart of gratitude changes the perspective yes. of situations. So yes. did you, did you, yeah, you feel comfortable talk chatting about that or sure i mean because at, during this time i'm i'm like newly divorced too mm -hmm. and so i mean i could be wallowing in right. that and and having to sell my home in beautiful northern idaho that we love uh, tall trees everything just like you know a dream yeah and you know um moving across country from idaho to tennessee um, you know, only friends, no real family, um, you know, just like you could, but it's like, you look at the things and you say, wow, you know, this is a new chapter. I know he's always been there. Um, yeah. when everything else I've done, and I have no doubt that he is doing the same now. I mean, I can just see in the little things that he puts together, um, things that I've read about or whatever. And then it's like, he makes it all come together. And it's like, you know, it's like treasure after treasure after treasure yeah. of coming through that he is yeah. just there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm just feeling really excited for what he has for us there in Tennessee because mm -hmm. I've seen what he's done all along the way. I mean, yeah, it's, it's just going to be really fun. Oh, that's so beautiful. I I'm excited for you. You know, yeah. your, um, you're uh, moving to this area in Tennessee, really Athens. good Athens. Yeah. Yes, you're moving to a, a really great area where there are a lot of, of believers, messianic yeah. believers there, yes. um, a lot of good foundation. Yeah, for you for your kids. Yes. Um, you know, there's a, a lot going on. Uh, and another really great thing is that you have dear, dear friends that live in that area. So yes. when you get there, you are, you're going to be part of a community instantly. Yeah. 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 Well, we've been following Jacob's tent forever, but you know, mm -hmm. it's like through the rooted cafe, I've come to know so many people in the areas as well. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like we have so many options. Like even if my kids, because of all the, um, the youth there will end up going to Jacob's tent. I could always go to something else for like the new moons or something else. And there's just so much community there mm -hmm. that, I mean, we have individuals here in Idaho. There's a lot of believers up here, but they're more like preppers and, and like more fearful. And so they're, they're more secluded and there's no community that meets. We, we just meet you know, like when we can and where we can. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I love them too. I'll be taking them right with me. You know, like I take the California people with me, I take the Idaho people with me, and I'll be in Tennessee. So, you know, love it's that. gonna be really fabulous. Yeah. So <laughs> I love that. Stacy said, I can't wait to see the rest of the story. That's so sweet. Me too, me too, she yeah. is moving. Millie wanted to know what where in Tennessee are you moving? She's moving to Athens, Tennessee. Right. Right. Athens. So yeah, that's really that's really great. Now, um, Let's see who has their hand up. Who else wants to share a story? Somebody put your hand up or unmute yourself. And then that way we can um, let you talk too. Okay. Um, so Cindy, you also were telling me, um, uh, you were telling me something about, um, you would, oh, I remember what it was. You and I were talking and you said how grateful you were because you've been living in this amazing little town in Idaho that oh, has not yes. been affected by COVID. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Because, I mean, we left the heart of California. I mean, in yeah. all of the Californianess. Mm -hmm. And we came up here to Idaho. And, you know, we didn't look this far north. Um, we didn't even know this far north existed, really. Uh, but he put us here. And this is the Bonners Ferry, Idaho, is the most beautiful small town that you could ever be in. Um, we were hardly shut down at all. We never had to wear masks. Um, I mean, it was just 
it was amazing that we could be here mm -hmm. um, during the heart of that and not really feel it much compared mm -hmm. to everyone else. I mean, it just was, it was a beautiful gift, you know, That's beautiful. Be yes. Yeah. That is beautiful, especially coming from an area where it was, you know, hot zone, really, really oh, red yeah. zone. And right. then, and then, so this two, this two year period, you actually were sent to this right, right when, when this pandemic started, correct? You were yeah, sent to. Yeah, it was to, pretty close. I mm -hmm. mean, so August we moved up and people started really getting sick, I think in like November and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, it all broke out you know, like January, February, that what was really happening broke out. Mm -hmm. um, and so we just sort of missed all that. And yeah. so it like August 19, we, you know, August of 19, we moved there. And then now two years later, August of 2021, we're moving out. So yeah. That's beautiful. The Holy One is so faithful, mm -hmm. isn't he? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. What yeah. has he been That's saying? Funny. What has he been saying to you lately? Not, not just, not just the, the term gratitude, but, but Cindy, what has he been, what are the heart things that he's been speaking to you about in this transition of, of the move and everything? Is there anything that you want to share? Wow. Um, I don't know that. I mean, it's like when I heard that you were doing gratitude, it really hit me because that's really pretty much what he's had me working on for a long while. Mm -hmm. I mean, just getting through everything is, is, and I didn't, wasn't terming it gratitude. Right. I mean, it was that, that positive thinking, always trying to look on the bright side, um, being positive with him, with me. And it, it truly, I mean, when you had mentioned gratitude, it was like, oh, that's truly what it is. All the, all the pieces are gratitude. You yeah. know, thankfulness um and the, and it's just like the joy comes from that and mm -hmm. and the hope comes from that and mm -hmm. the peace comes from that the shalom you know it's just like everything richly comes out of that um that gratitude and i think it's kind of like not being like the grumbly israelite you know yeah. the grumbly in the wilderness even though you're in the wilderness you don't have to be grumbly you know look for look for the good bits and, and the more of the good bits that you recognize and look for, the more actually you see and come at you, you know, your yes. life becomes more and more of that. Yes. So that's what I've been finding really. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that is, that is really good. Yeah. Looking for the non grumbly bits. I like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> look for those non grumbly bits because come on, we know exactly what happens when we're grumbling. Right. And it's an easy yeah. pattern to fall into. You know, it really, it, it really is. Too. Yeah. They're both patterns. Yeah. So you choose. Are you yeah. going to choose life yeah. or not? Yeah. That's the perfect segue into the tour, uh, <laughs> the <go>. tour portion <laughs> this week, because the, the, it starts off with, look guys, there's, there's two mountains here. One mountain right. Is going to be the blessing. You're going to be pronouncing the blessings, and on the other mountain, you're going to be pronouncing the curses. It's like these are the things. This is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And and the reality is that if we truly are grateful, if we mm -hmm. are truly walking in gratitude, even mm -hmm. the hard things are part right. of the story. Right. How right. we respond, how we react, how mm -hmm. we how we um, uh, uh, partner with the Holy One in the midst of what he's doing mm -hmm. that right. makes the story right right well and it's hard to see the gratitude bits if you if it's all good you start to lose that train but when there are the yeah. good bits in amongst the hard times yeah um it's really easy to see them you know really yeah, yeah. it really is this has been a, um a hard uh, a few weeks uh mm. in my home uh, mm. difficult, uh, difficult time for, for my husband. It's been a very difficult time for him. And, um, 
uh, so I was asking the Lord, what today, what is like the biggest thing that I'm really like, really, really grateful for today. And mm-hmm. today my husband was able to go to the gym. Now my husband was a, an athlete in college and always has been an athlete since he was, a, since he was a young, young child and, and all through high school and all through college. And he's always been athletic and, and always worked out and, um, and my kids do too. So, um, but they're adults now, but, uh, so him, um, having this, um, situation that he's in the midst of that has, um, limited his ability to be Mm -hmm. able to have function, to be able to do things that he really, really, really loves doing. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so today he just decided that he was, he was up for it. And, um, and so I was able to take him to the gym and he was able to get a workout. And it's so great because his, it's his happy place. And it's like when he gets into the gym and he is standing next to a stack of weights, you know, he's a beast, he's a beast and he's standing next to a stack of weights and he's, and he's, he's like 15 all over again. It's like his whole body, like forgets about all of the inability to do whatever it is not able to do right now. And it's like all of the muscle memory just comes back and he's able to do those things. And it's, and it's so, it's so great. Um, and it, it just, it, it's just beautiful all the way around. I'm just going to tell you, it's just, it, it's just beautiful all the way around. And it's just one of those things that I'm so, so, so grateful for when Jeff and I were very young and we first started dating before we got married and we got married right away. But when we first started dating, he was, he was coaching me at the gym and working out. And so Mm -hmm. we've always had that connection. We've always had that, you know, that we've always loved doing. We were always walking, you know, and when I mean walking, I mean, walking, walking, not just like a little stroll, but we were walkers and, um, I'm not a real runner. Um, he used to run track. I'm, I'm not a real runner, but we've always been where we worked through a lot of things and a lot of conflicts through physical activity. And so Uh when you're in a, when you're in, um, the, the changes that occur in your life when that is no longer available or safe for you to be able to do, then, mm-hmm. you know, you, you have to come up with different things. And, um, mm-hmm. one of the things that the Holy one's just really been, um, showing me is to just be really grateful when, when that can happen. And so today was just such a blessed day. It was, it was a hard day in a, in a lot of ways, but, but this beautiful cherry on the top, you know, it's like how, how wonderful that, um, that he was able to do that. And, and it just, it blessed him and it blessed me. And, uh, I'll just tell you, uh, it's, it's wonderful. And for us, these are the things that are like our faith book. This is like our memories that we get to, I get to put this down. Like, guess what happened today? Right. You know, I get to, I get to let my kids know, guess what happened today? Your dad got to go to the gym today. I mean, this is, this is fantastic. These are, this is how we learn to celebrate life because right. we just get so busy with things and we forget that sometimes this, these little things are really significant and really important. Oh, and, yeah. and in um, process of, uh, and any of you who are caregivers understand what I'm talking about. In, in the process, in the grieving process of letting go of things and life that is not uh, what your expectations were of life, um, mm-hmm. in the grief and the, the process of letting go of all of that, it's very easy to not see things from the perspective of gratitude. It's very easy to see just the things that are being taken away on a daily basis Mm -hmm. and the things Mm -hmm. that are no longer, um, uh, you know, yours that used to be yours. And so these are, these are, um, beautiful days for me to, 
really be filled with gratitude. And, and it's uh, been a lovely, I can honestly say it's, this has been a really lovely journey because the Holy One has changed my perspective. And because of his greatness, because of his goodness, because of his mercy, he has uh, given me the opportunity to truly, truly be grateful Yes. with the things that I do have and not be seeing all of the things that I don't have. Right. Um, you know, and that's a topic for a different, <laughs> right, different right. day. However, yeah. um, it is, it is part of my gratitude story. So, yeah. uh, you know, and, uh, and I can honestly say that even the hard days are really good days. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I, I get to, I get to be able to, I get to be able to live a beautiful life. And I'm yes. very, very yeah. thankful for that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and sometimes when old things go away, new things come, mm -hmm. you have new things. Mm -hmm. They may not be the old things, but they're the new things. So they're, they're good. They're yeah. Good. Abs <laughs> Absolutely. My husband tells me every morning, this is the best cup of coffee I ever had. <laughs> See, there like, you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? <laughs> that is a great way to start your day every day. To, yeah. to experience your coffee being the best cup of coffee you've ever had in your entire life. That is an awesome way to have a day. That's living now. Yeah, <laughs> that is that truly is living in the now and, um, and delighting in delighting in the goodness of God. One, one of the things um, uh, my husband was uh, just recently, um, <laughs> I'm going to tattle on him. He told me I could tell, but it feels like tattling on him. But we, uh, he recently had to have a brain MRI um, and another, and it's, it's an ongoing thing. And so he had um, uh, an MRI scheduled. And so he got to the, he, he got to the um, facility where they, where they do it. And they're very familiar with him. You know, he comes, <laughs> he's like everybody's friend. And, right. and, uh, and so he was, so he walks, he walks up to the counter and he says, um, which was, he walked up to the counter. Did you hear that? See, that's another day of gratitude. Wow. So, um, yeah. So he was, he was standing there and he was, he was talking to the ladies and he said, how are my kingdom ladies doing today? Isn't it a good day? How are you kingdom ladies doing? And do you know, I mean, he's just so bold and just filled with love and filled with joy, seriously. And so, and so I'm thinking, oh, geez, <laughs> you know, but he just doesn't even care. He's just like, he's just going to find out who it is. I mean, who's a kingdom person here? Like he just, right. he doesn't know everybody that's a kingdom person. So he said that to me and one of the receptionists, she goes, well, I'm a kingdom woman and it's great. It's great to see you today too. And he's like, oh, that's awesome. That's wonderful. So then he you know, we proceeded on. And then a few days later, we had to go back. And when we walked in, and he said, there's my kingdom ladies. She was so delighted. She's like, Oh, Mr. Jeff. I mean, it was just, it, it was like, uh -huh. it made her yeah. day. Yeah. And we, we forget that sometimes it is the smallest thing, the smallest thing that we say, or do the smallest extension of ourselves mm -hmm. to bless someone else, because what he did was he gave her the opportunity in the midst of all of her coworkers, right. To stand up and say, yeah, I'm a kingdom woman. Wow. Yeah. And, wow. you know, and she did. Wow. And yeah. then she was just delighted. So the next time that she saw him a few days later, she was so happy. And she said, are you going to have a cup of coffee? Because he loves the coffee there. Cause you know, obviously he loves coffee. Yeah. So, um, so he said, yeah, you know, yes, I am. So he had a cup of coffee there and she was just like, so happy to see him and, and yes, yeah. took care of everything. And he didn't have to wait. And, and they were just wow. so good because they know that it's very difficult for him. You know, it's, it's, it's difficult. And so yeah. he didn't have to yeah. wait. They didn't make him wait or anything. He just, it was just wow. beautiful. Nice. And just to see the favor of God on him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but he lives a life of gratitude. And I can, mm -hmm. I can honestly say he's, he is my biggest 
um, example of living a life of gratitude because he is so not in any way like, well, I can't believe this has happened to me. You know, this is what, why is all this stuff happening to me? Why am I losing all of these things? Why, you know, why, why, why has this happened? And now this is happening and now this is happening. What he doesn't ever come from that perspective. He's always coming from the perspective of, uh, look how good God is today. You know, wow. he, he, um, uh, I should have him be on this show. <laughs> I know. Yes. <laughs> he, um, he, he has a very difficult time, uh, getting dressed now. Mm-hmm. Major thing, huge, major thing. Like, you know, some of us have corporate meetings that we go to, or we have, you know, we, we, we're, we're doing deals or we're, you know, we're doing my husband. It's like the, when he gets up in the morning, his biggest thing is, is he going to be able to walk Mm. to the door? Mm -hmm. Is he going to be able to get his clothes on? Mm -hmm. And, um, and so his whole thing is every morning he sits on the edge of the bed and he prays, thank you, father. Will you please give me the strength right now to put this shirt on? And sometimes he does. And sometimes he doesn't, but sometimes he does. Yeah. And when he does, he's grateful. And when he doesn't, he's grateful. Right. You know, and then, you know, and then that's, that's what I get to help with. You know, those are the things that I get to do and I get to be grateful for being able to do these things. Right. But um, he still gets it on because yeah, the shirt on because you help him. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and so he was telling somebody the other day and I thought, well, that's a funny thing to tell somebody, but I realized that for him, that is his, that, that is his accomplishment for the day. So he, he, he was telling them, I was praying this morning and, and he said, um, Adonai, I asked him, Adonai, would you, would you help me put my foot, please help me put my foot into my pant leg. I would really appreciate it. And I thought, father, God, forgive me because in my life, how often am I that grateful for the mm. smallest act, something that I can do? How mm. often am I that grateful? And I want to live my life that way. I want to be a person who is so grateful for the smallest things yes. and not take for granted, you know, yeah. things that yeah. I, that I take for granted. And mm. for my husband, he is, he was so grateful and he's just so grateful that he can do the things that he can do. And wow. so he teaches me every day, um, mm. you know, how, how to walk a walk of gratitude right. and I appreciate it. Yeah. 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 I really That's do. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Stacy said, it's amazing how Yahweh placed you as his help me to be the right there for him. Mm-hmm. Stacy, yeah. I truly, you know, Stacy, I truly believe that. And that's what I was saying. Like, uh, like this morning, being made aware that guess what guys, we are in the situations that we're in as hard as they are, as difficult as they are, or as beautiful as they are. We're in these situations because we are the right woman. We are Isha's and we are the right women for the job that we're in, whether we're married or we're single, it doesn't matter whether we are young or we are old. It doesn't matter where we are right now is exactly where we're supposed to be and how we influence the people around us. This is, this is what we get to do. You know, this is what we get to do. So Thank you. I, I'm, I am blessed. I'm, I'm telling you, I am, um, I am trusting Abba for all of the things that Mm -hmm. he is doing in our lives. And so, you know, some days, some days it's, uh, easier and some days it's not, but, oh man, we get to partner with the Holy one. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if you're, if you've been reading the Torah portions and you've been you know, just, uh, having this opportunity right now, Moshe is in the middle of <laughs> giving his last, the, the last segments of his, um, story to the people to encourage them and build them up and equip them 
to become the nation, the people of God, and to take that land. He is filling Joshua up. He is filling the people up. He is reminding them and giving them words that are going to last throughout all the generations. Because guess what? Those are the words that we're getting right now, too. Mm -hmm. So that's what's happening right now. And he is showing them the errors that have come about, the ways that have not gone the way that maybe that they should have, but he's also reminding them of how good God is, that every time they turn around, the Holy One is right there doing Mm -hmm. and being who he is. And isn't this beautiful that as, as women, we get to be part of the story of the, not just right now, but of the generations to come. You may think that you don't have an influence on people, but sisters, can I just tell you right now that you have an influence on the people that God brings into your life. And in, in Exodus, and I know that you, most of you guys already know this, but in, in, in the book of Exodus, it's talking about when they're building the tabernacle and all of the clasps and all of the, um, uh, the fittings and the sockets are all being put together, right? Well, in, in Hebrew, all of those things that are being put together are basically people. In Hebrew, the terminology that's being used, like for the word clasp, is isha. Would you think of that? Wow. That the that the clasps that the the clasps that are put together to hold together the curtains to cover over the holy of holies to cover over the inner courts, that those clasps that are grabbing hold of that, the word for those clasps in English is isha, which is wow. women, wow. and that and that the the joints that are fit together. The some of them are brothers. They're called brothers, and some of them are called sisters. So wow. in the building of this tabernacle, when we look at it from the perspective of the Holy One, this Hebrew perspective, when we're looking at it, we're looking at this building that's being put together, fitly joined together, like, like Paul tells us about all of the pieces fitly joined together because he's building a family. He's building all of us Isha's because we are grabbing hold of one another arm in arm, clasp by clasp. We're grabbing hold of these things. We are securing each other. We're securing the sisters. And then the brothers are also being clasped onto us. They have a different a function. They have a different function, but they're being connected too. And we're all being connected together to make this tabernacle, which is the dwelling of the Holy one. What is the tabernacle? The place where he dwells. Right. And we are all part of the place where he dwells. Mm. So if you think in any way that your life is insignificant, every act of Shemaim, every act of walking in his ways to whatever degree you're able to do it, it doesn't have to be perfect, but to every degree of walking in his ways that you do, you are joining, clasping with the rest of us because this is a community effort, walking, bringing forth the kingdom, ushering in Messiah for the messianic age. This is all part of our collective activity as a group. It's not about one person. It's about all of us. And so every act of obedience, every act of faithfulness, every time you give a cold cup of water to somebody, every time you are kind to somebody who's not kind to you, every time you are reaching your hand out to give charity to somebody, every time you are blessing somebody, every time you are repairing the breaches in this world, you're repairing the fractures in someone's heart. You are significant and you are valuable and you are necessary. And we all need you and we all need each other together with our own personalities, with our own differences, with our own calendars that we follow, with our own, with all of the things, all of the things. We need all of those things together so that we can be this beautiful tabernacle this tapestry that has been formed with wood and gold and beauty and jewels and all of the, you know, wood is people. (laughs) So all of the things, 
all of that is all being joined together perfectly, beautifully, so that his presence dwells in the midst of us. It doesn't dwell in just one person. It dwells in the midst of us, in the midst of this tabernacle. And so please, ladies, please know, know that you know that you know that you know that you are significant, you are valuable, you are important, and you are vital to the rest of us. And how you hear God, how you hear what he says, and how you interpret that, and how you walk that out, that's valuable to me, to my, to my children, because it affects me. So Cindy, your stories of this faith booking your stories mm. of your faithfulness in your two and a half year labor for each of your children with with the phone being having to make sure that the batteries are always charged and knowing that at any minute you can get the call for two and a half years every day every day knowing any second the alarm's going to go off that's that walking that out having that and not having it be a negative thing but having it be anticipatory and exciting mm-hmm. and wonderful. And that affects me. So you're what you did affects me. And it will affect my children because I'm carrying that with me now. Mm, wow. So can I just say thank you? Thank yeah. you for being you. <laughs> thank you for walking this out and sharing your stories with us. Yeah, yeah. All like, of our stories are that important. They really are. That's the thing is that all of our stories are that important. And each and every one of you, Isha's, you have stories that you may think are insignificant, but they're not. They're yeah. not insignificant. Yeah. Oh my goodness, we're almost out of time. Ladies, are there any of you, would you do you have anything that you would like to share? Any stories? Anything? Whitney, Stacy, Sherry, Millie, Katie? <laughs> They all have good stories. They all have great they, stories. I know they do, yes. And none of them are coming off mute. Oh. What? <laughs> that's so funny. Well, that's okay, ladies. I'm I know that I'm calling you on you at the last minute, but um, I just wanted to tell you how delighted I am to be with you all today. And um, Cindy, do you have anything else you'd like to share with us? Is there any is there any other stories that you think of? Um, I know that you were you were telling me that you were going to think of a story that you were going to share tonight, and I don't know, maybe you already did. I yeah, I think it was just like the general that like uh, the way my life had been, mm-hmm. you know, just mm-hmm. um, coming out of my shell, and just the right. more I yield to him, mm-hmm. the more work he can do in me mm-hmm. and and through me, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean that that was. My, my story for that. Ah, beautiful. Well, I'll tell a story on me. I'll, I'll, I'll tattle on me since we've got a couple <laughs> minutes. <laughs> and you guys, you know, I know that you would think that this would never happen to anybody else, but <laughs> guess what? <laughs> so today I was, um, I had a really, a really difficult, um, I had some really difficult things happen today. So, uh, <laughs> typical. And so, um, in the midst of it all, I was telling the Holy one, um, can I, can I mute you sis? We're having a little bit of, is there, let's see, hold on one second. There we go. Um, so in the midst of it all, I was telling the Lord because he doesn't know these things. Right. So I was telling him how busy I am and how many things that I have to get done and how behind schedule I am today. And I have so many things to get done and that this is a big waste of time. And um, I didn't want to have to take time out to go do something that I, that I needed to go do. And I didn't want to do that. <laughs> so I'm telling the Lord, I'm really busy. I'm telling him, I'm really busy. You know that I'm really, really busy. And my time is valuable. And I have a lot of things to get. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I just, in my spirit, I kind of hear this chuckle going on like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Hold on now. Wait a minute. Let me just get this straight. Okay. This is your time and your time is valuable yeah. <laughs> and you've got to get, the- <laughs> and so you can hear what I'm saying. And so I'm, I'm rushing through the grocery store and I'm, I'm, you know, pushing the shopping cart really, really fast and getting <laughs> <laughs> push the shop cart, like trying to stay out of people's way and get, get things taken care of. And 
and I just hear this and I just start cracking up, you know, and I, I told Cindy, I said, I, I should have been on fire. Basically, I should have had lightning hit me is really what should have happened. But um, the Holy One's so kind. He's so gracious. But I just kind of heard a chuckle like in my spirit. I just kind of heard this chuckle like, oh, wait, 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 let me make sure that I've got this right. Yeah. So your time is valuable. And these are all the things that you're doing. And these things are important because you're doing them. And I just I just stood back and I just started laughing. I'm in the grocery store laughing. I think that they're they're familiar with me on <laughs> the grocery store. They know I, I'm the one that's always walking through the store laughing hysterically. And, um, and I was just laughing. I'm like, Father, how do you put up with me? You mm. know, my mm. days are ordered of the Holy One. If, if he needed me to be in the grocery store, he needed me to be in the grocery store. So who am I to say that the grocery store is not valuable enough for my time? <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, and it's funny because, because after I was laughing about that, because afterwards I thought, oh my goodness. So when I pulled up a car in front of me pulled up and a gentleman and a woman got out of their car and it looked like they'd been traveling and they got out of their car and they shut their doors and something fell out of the man's pocket. And then they went into the store. Well, I couldn't get out of my car fast enough to let them know that they dropped something. So he dropped something out of his pocket. And, and so when I'm in the end, so I went and picked it up and I put it on the hood of their car. So they would obviously see it when they, when they got back mm -hmm. to their car. Um, I was going to take it inside the store and I thought, well, what if I never see him and then they leave? Oh yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, won't, yeah. that won't work. They need yeah. to see it. And so anyway, I put it up on the car. So I went into the store and I never did see them. So they actually did leave way. I never did see them. So I'm glad I didn't bring it into the store looking for them. But anyway, and so as I'm telling the Lord, how important my day was, I was thinking, Father, if you brought me to the store just so that that gentleman wouldn't get, it was the, it was the cord to his cell phone. Oh, wow. And if right. they would have dr driven off or if somebody would have parked next to them, he would not have seen it because it fell mm -hmm. into the, into the open space next to him. Yeah. So, uh, that could really upset your day <laughs> if your, yeah. if your cell phone charger, right. you know, was gone and you're on a long trip. And it looked, it looked from the vehicle that they were driving, it looked like they were on a long trip. So right. anyway, I was thinking, Father, forgive me for just trying to rush through everything and just like, hurry, 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 get it all done. Boom, boom, boom. Got to get, because maybe that was the only reason that I had to go to the store today, mm -hmm. you know, just so that that, so that that gentleman would have his cell phone charger. I mean, come yeah. on, yeah. you know, that, uh, how good is God yeah. that he yeah. would make sure that it didn't get run over by another car yeah. or somebody didn't park on top of it. Right, um, right. Or he didn't see it when he got back in the car and then he drove off and, and wasn't able to charge his phone. Right. So, wow. Wow. you know, it's just those little things like that. If we can just kind of be aware mm -hmm. that, you know, when he was inside the store, if he was checking his pockets, he might've been, he might've been concerned that he'd lost it already. Right. And hopefully when he got back, you know, there, there it was for him. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, I'm really trying in my life right now to try to simplify things and, and take the small wins and take mm -hmm. the, take the small, you know, delights and, and really learn to be focused on how good is God in this moment? It's not all about the destination. It's not all mm -hmm. about getting to the next big thing. It's really about living in the moment and living right now and mm -hmm. being available to be the light wherever you are, whatever that looks like. But um, I'm just glad that God didn't decide to, you know, light me on fire today for my <laughs> bad attitude <laughs> and my like griping and complaining about the fact that I was a really busy person. And I know that he doesn't know this. <laughs> he's so, he's so good to me. I tell you what, I, I am like, probably direct lined at, to Abahu and, and, uh, you know, the Aaron's, Aaron's boys, I probably have a straight direct line to them because I'm like, that would totally be unholy fire for me. But anyway, so, all right, ladies, well, we, are, it is, um, it's time for us to end our program today. I just, oh, Ina Gould has her hand up. Okay. Ina Gould, before we leave, I want to hear from you, sis. I'm going to ask you to unmute. 
There you go. Uh, yeah. So we we're talking about stories of gratitude, and I was trying to think up of some or uh, think of something, but I realized mm -hmm. when I was living um, with when we had moved out of the house that we were living in in Ohio mm -hmm. um, back in February, I went into like I would say three months of just feeling really, really lonely. And then spring came along and I was really homesick and I wanted to be back in Montana doing the things that I would typically be doing when spring hit. And, um, and Sabbaths were actually kind of uh, the worst like evenings for me because mm -hmm. I lived with um, a couple and their daughter, but it was their, their um, date night. So I would just be home alone on Sabbaths. And I, um, the people I usually went to Sabbath gatherings were, with, they had been going through a lot of hospital stuff, so they couldn't give me rides to Sabbath. Oh, and I'm just, I was feeling so much loneliness. And I remember kind of talking to the father about it and saying, you know what? I'm really thankful for this because it's a great opportunity for me to learn how to deal with loneliness without mm -hmm. having that crutch of people that I can just run away to, to take the loneliness away. And, um, and especially thinking in, in relationship to one day when I have a husband and a family and, you know, you're going to have those moments where even though you have kids running around the house and you have a husband, like you're just going to feel lonely sometimes. Yes. And so I thought um, I was just really grateful and thankful for that three month period because I really had to hone in on how do I do this well with the father? That's oh, that's so, so, that's so good. I know. Cool. Thank you very much for sharing that. And, you know, you know, um, we all, can I just tell you that even you're, you're so wise because even living with someone else, there's times when you, you get really lonely. Um, and I love that. It's like, it's like, um, the loneliness reminds us that he truly is the one that our heart yearns after. And we, we do need companionship. We do need fellowship with one another. I'm not in any way diminishing that. It is, it's vitally important that we have fellowship one with another. But when we feel those times of loneliness, I love that. It's like, it reminds us how good he is, how faithful he is. Um, and so Ina Gul, how is your, where is your story at now? Where are you at right now? And, um, and, and what's going on with that? Um, what, oh. Like, where are you living? You've moved out of Ohio. Um, I am actually not, I am still in Ohio for 10 okay. more days. And then oh, I'm for going, 10 more days. Okay. Yes. Yes. And then I am going to spend a weekish in Bozeman um, to see family and stuff. And then I am going to be going up to Missoula and staying with Gail Heaton for a little bit until I can find a place to live. Okay. So. Oh, that'll be yes. wonderful. Wow. What a blessing and such a nice community there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be going to the Bitterroot because we, we have a lot of friends in the Bitterroot. So, ah. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Well, I Nicole, I'm glad, I'm glad to get updated. I thought that you'd already left, but no, I'm 10 days early. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was up in the air a lot because I was going to have a friend come down here and help me move. And then I just decided to fly and then it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Uh, I'm so glad. And thank you so much, Ina Gould. I just want to say thank you publicly. Thank you so much for jumping on and helping me today. Ina Gould co-hosted for me so that she could let everybody in and she could take care of these things so that I'm not being silly staring off, although I still do sometimes, <laughs> staring off into things. But Stacy. um, Stacy had a, a beautiful comment and also Millie had a great comment. And I'd like to share. Um, I'd like to share that. Uh, Stacy said it's her first meeting that she's been able to make. Stacy, welcome. Oh, cool. That's so great, Stacy. Welcome. And I've been able to make, I'm so thankful that I was able to make it. Yes. Maybe one day I'll be able to share how the death of my daughter actually saved my life. Stacy, oh, wow. we would love, love, love for you to mm -hmm. share with us. So mm -hmm. I'll be in touch with you and maybe we can set up a time where we can 
where we can do, I would just love to hear your story um, because mm. that to me sounds like an amazing gratitude story. Um, Millie also, Millie said that God kept a family safe even though it cost me being in a car accident, I found out that the car behind me had a family of four. And if I had stopped and taken a break for longer than I did, they would have been hit instead of me. Oh. Millie, wow. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. So Millie, was this just recent? Oh, oh 2003, okay. Good deal. All right. Well, ladies, we're going to go ahead and stop our recording now. And we just pray a blessing over each and every one of you. And then we hang on. Um, those of you that are live with me, hang on, we're going to have an after party. Um, but those of you that are, are listening to our um, to this as a replay, we just want to bless you. Uh, all of us that are here right now, we just want to we want to bless you. Father, we thank you for these people that are listening. Um, on podcast and those that are listening to the replay. Father, we just pray a blessing over them. We ask that you would speak to each heart individually and meet every need. Father, whatever, whatever it is that's in their life right now, you brought them today to join with their sisters. And we collectively group together in our prayers for them, that every need that they have would be met, that every fracture would be healed that every child would be returned, that every loved one that is far away would be gathered in. We pray for every job. We pray for every provision. We pray for the year coming. We pray for the fruitfulness, Father. We pray for fruitfulness to be multiplied for each and every person in their lives, in their homes, in their children, and in their children's children. We pray for healing, Father, for those that are sick. We ask for your hand to touch and to minister to and to secure and uphold and support each and every precious woman here today. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. And we, we thank you for this hour that we have had to just share a time so sweetly and so gently share this time that's been filled with nothing but gratitude for you. Mm -hmm. So we bless you, mighty one. Thank you for Cindy and her testimonies. Thank you for everyone who shared. In the mighty name of Yeshua, amen. Well, ladies, we will see you next. Um, the next Tuesday talk will be the third Tuesday of the month, and it will be at 11 Eastern time, Tuesday morning, the third Tuesday of the month. And then we'll go back again on the first Tuesday of the following month. We'll have the evening program like we did tonight. So blessings to all of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you again, Cindy. We Thank love you. you all. And we'll see you next time on Tuesday Talk.